Hi, my name is Kendra Robinson Radcliffe, and I'm the first cousin of Ronnie Settles, currently serving as the vice president for the Ron Settles Memorial Foundation. I was about seven years old when Ronnie died. Um, and so the time that I do distinctly remember him was between probably the ages of four and seven. Um, specifically, I, being born in California, would spend a lot of time at my Aunt Helen's house, a lot of time, and therefore, as a result, would be there often when Ronnie would come home from football practice. Um, and he didn't seem to mind entertaining me. He didn't seem to mind playing with his annoying little cousin after a long practice and a long day. Um, I remember tagging along with him often with some of his friends or, or just him taking me wherever he was going to. Um, and again, not seeming to mind <laughs> that he had this little person that he was taking care of or responsible for. I'm not sure if he uh, offered to do that or if he was forced to do that. Knowing my family, he was probably forced to do that, but um, he didn't seem to mind. And I, I do have distinct memories of enjoying spending a lot of time with my big cousin. So one of the things that I think is important um, when we are telling the story about Ronnie Settles is humanizing him. A lot of people don't remember him from the standpoint of, I see a lot of articles and I see a lot of um, posts on social media that come up whenever there's another hashtag like an Ahmaud Arbery or um, a Breonna Taylor or a George Floyd. So I do see Ronnie's name pop up often, but that's specific to a generation. As a matter of fact, about a month ago, I met a person over the phone who had contacted me after an email um, exchange and he saw my email address and was trying to figure out why the name Ronnie Settles was um, given for an Atlanta location. He, he was confused by that. And he said, is this the Ron Settles? Because I'm confused about the Atlanta location. And I told him it was. Um, and then we had a, a, a long conversation about his personal um, memories of that story. One of the things that um, I walked away from our conversation with was him saying that being in California in the 80s, especially being a young black man in California in the 80s, you couldn't um, have been around at that time and not know who Ronnie is. So that stood out to me because there is a generation of people that remember his story and, and know where they were when they were hearing about it and all of the facts of the case and were involved in the protests and things of that nature. But then there's a whole different generation that is new or this information is new for them. There was no body cam footage. There was no cell phone video. Um, there, there weren't witnesses or eyewitnesses. It was just um, his story against the police department.